I've done different introduction videos, but I find that what usually happens, you know, when you're learning about graphology and you learn all the traits, whether you learn the beginner stuff or you learn the advanced stuff, it's just kind of a, no a lot of knowledge. And then once you're actually doing a handwriting analysis, you're looking at the handwriting and you just get overwhelmed because you're like, God, I, I see everything. I don't know how it all fits together. I also, like you don't know what to do first. So today in this video, I'm gonna share with you my step-by-step -step thought process when I'm looking at a new piece of handwriting, 10 steps, 10 digestible steps, 10 steps. And I have notes. So here's your cheat sheet. The first thing that I look at is angularity or curves. When you have a lot of angles in the handwriting, angles indicate aggression, not being able to form a curved line. It, you know, it means the muscles are stiff, they're tense. And if the words are really stretched, then you know that they're really compressed and they're really stressed. Um, versus if you see a fluid line, if you see someone that uses a lot of curves in their handwriting, you know, okay, this person is a lot more gentle. This, this person is a lot more friendly. This person is a lot more um, compatible with others. People can be friendly to the extreme where they're just, you know, people walk over them because they're so nice. So there is that. I look at angularity or curves and this can kind of tell you the demeanor of a person. Step two, I look for distortions or reverses. Distortions are the type of thing that really jump out on the page at you because they're very different from how you were taught to write, right? Distortions can look like a couple different things. They can be just distorted shapes. They can be like unexplained twisting, or you can also see like broken forms happening. I'll show some pictures of examples to show you what I'm talking about, but these broken forms indicate emotional distortions. Reverses can indicate like a rebellious quality, but they can also indicate dishonesty. And then tangles just indicate emotional turbulence. Number three, you can look at line quality. What this basically means is how the pen is on the page. Like, is it really light on the page? Is it really firm on the page? Is it kind of like in and out? If it's in and out, then you know there's some health problems going on. If it's really firm pressure, then you know this person is like really, uh, it, it means emotional vitality. They have a lot of energy. They're a bit headstrong. And then someone who, who's a bit lighter, they can be anywhere from like more gentle with others to just like not really firm in their decision making. Next, I look at the slant. Slant is which direction the handwriting leads. So look for, is the slant forward and is the right fast this indicates you know this person is very emotionally free they're very emotionally expressive is the writing fast and free or is the writing slow and cautious and reserved and this kind of shows the emotional nature of the writer number five I look for how this person writes the personal pronoun I the personal pronoun I is the only graphic form that represents the writer so it does subconsciously reflect how the writer feels about themselves so you look is this I like super big with a super super wide base is the eye really small and minuscule so so like a really small eye would mean that you know this person could be humble but if it's coupled with other like traits of insecurity and nervousness then you know that okay this person does not have high self-esteem also if it, if it's diminished to like a lowercase i then you know this person really doesn't think that they're deserving they don't think they're even deserving of deserving a capital letter to represent themselves versus if it's a super large capital then you know okay this person takes up a lot of space in the room and they think very very highly of themselves so you want a happy medium but if you notice any shrinking or any gross enlargement then you know okay something's going on number six I look for opinions and this is the only step where you have to read the writing a lot of people they want to give me their handwriting but then they're like oh no i don't want you to read what i was writing like this was a personal diary etc um which i get but <laughs> in my analysis there are very few steps that involve actually reading the writing right other than telling opinions so that's the only case where i would read a writing sample and this is to gauge where their feelings or opinions change about the subject of what they're writing. So if you're looking at someone's diary entry and they write something along the lines of, today was good, it was okay, but I had a really scary talk with my dad and he really freaked me out. And then when this person starts writing about their dad, you notice like the slant goes back, the writing gets smaller, like it, you notice all these like nervous traits, any sort of changes essentially just tells you how this person feels about a subject. Or if you look at just how a person writes the word school, how this person writes a, the word mom, dad. If a writer is like having these changes like 
about certain nouns or subjects. Just like notice how they treat a word differently and that's how you can kind of tell where someone's opinions are. You can also tell about if, uh, if they're lying. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video. Maybe I'll make a whole video about lying. I don't know. Number seven, I look for legibility. This can come sooner, but um, I didn't think about it when I was writing this list until then. So legibility, do they have the self-respect to write legibly? Uh, and, and that has to do with what the sample's intention was. Like, is this a writing sample where the person is writing a letter to someone else? Or is this a writing sample where it was like a diary? Is this a personal journal? Who is the writing intended for? And you can kind of tell like, based on how legible it is, how their respect for that person is or how they care to communicate with others because writing is like, it's a, it's a tool for communicating, so. There are different exceptions, like uh, different different learning disabilities that will change what uh, the legibility is in a writing. And if you have a learning disability, this like completely changes the analysis, but you can still do a lot of stuff with the, with the sample, but it does completely change the analysis. And I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because it's just like too complex and would need more time. <laughs> Eight and nine, I, I'm gonna go into some letter specific. Letter specifics are fun if you wanna get just a little bit more detail about a person, but I do prefer not to weigh my whole analysis on letter specific traits. But anyways, number eight, I'm gonna look at I dots. Is it a slash? It means they're hasty and impatient. Is it super forward? It means they're a super forward person. Is it super behind? It means they're very nervous about sharing their ideas. Is it super up? It means they're very imaginative, but they don't really have their feet on the ground. Is it right above the I dot? Like right above the stem? It means they have incredible attention to detail, but they kind of get tunnel vision. The graphic form of writing a stroke and then putting a dot, that dot can really tell you a lot about where this person's head's at. And then I look for capital K's that usually indicates like defiance, issues with authority. And I look for T bars because T bars can be a, a, a gauge of how high you set the bar for yourself and, and how long it is indicates how much willpower you have. The lower it is, the lower your self-esteem is. But again, with letter specific traits, you have to look for, you know, recurring patterns. You can't just bank your analysis on letter specifics. And then number 10, what I look at is I look at signatures and I'll talk about signatures in another video. Yeah, in the next video, I'll talk about signatures because I think that will, that will be a more extensive talk. But yeah, I see how their signature compares to their handwriting. So that was the video. Subscribe for more handwriting stuff and to learn more and to learn more.